The F-4 Phantom is often regarded as the deadliest fighter in Vietnam. This tandem, two-seat, twin-engine, all-weather, long-range supersonic jet interceptor and fighter bomber became one of the Vietnam War's most recognizable and feared planes. The Phantom first entered service in 1961 with the Navy. After proving to be highly adaptable, it was also flown by the Marine Corps and the United States Air Force. Everyone wanted to fly this jet, capable of Mach 2.2 speeds. During its four decades of active service in the United States' three air arms, the aircraft set 16 world performance records. It downed more adversaries than any other U.S. fighter in the Vietnam War. Eventually, the Phantom entered service with 15 other militaries across the world. Some of those F-4s still fly today. An iconic U.S. fighter of the Vietnam War era, there's no doubt why the F-4 Phantom became one of the most feared aircraft of its time. Yes, no, maybe. In 1952, engineer Dave Lewis was appointed design manager at McDonnell Aircraft Corporation. Without any aircraft request for proposals on the horizon, McDonnell's internal studies concluded that the Army would benefit from a new attack fighter. The following year, the company began revising and increasing their F-3H Demon fighter jet's overall performance. One of the versions even promised a speed of Mach 1.97. In September 1952, McDonnell presented their new and improved Super Demon. The Navy was interested enough to order a full-scale mock-up, but canceled the project because they believed the Grumman XF-9F9 and the Vought XF-8U1 already filled the need for a supersonic fighter. So instead of starting another project from scratch, McDonnell reworked their design into a fighter-bomber. In October 1954, the aircraft company received a letter of intent for two of these prototypes. But when the Navy showed up at the McDonald's St. Louis headquarters, they presented the company with a new set of requirements. Since they already had the steady Douglas A-4 Skyhawk and F-8 Crusader for dogfighting purposes, the Navy now needed an all-weather fleet defense interceptor. To this new design, McDonald added a second crewman to operate the powerful radar, since Dave Lewis believed that air combat would overload pilots traveling solo. The Phantom the Phantom was powered by two GE turbojets, each generating close to 18,000 pounds of thrust with its afterburners lit. Although a relatively large fighter, it was capable of a top speed of Mach 2.2. Since 1959, the Phantom set 15 world records for in-flight performance, including an absolute speed record and an absolute altitude record. The F-4 could hold up to 18,000 pounds of weapons, such as air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missiles, and different types of bombs. Like other interceptors of the Vietnam War era, the Phantom was initially designed without an internal cannon. Because it was a peculiar jet, pilots had a love-hate relationship with the Phantom. It had none of the attractive and newfangled features some of the fighters of its generation usually had, save for one big secret, but more on that later. Although the jet carried an internal navigation system, there was no flight management system, no GPS, no electronic flight instrument system, and no voice system to alert the pilot of upcoming hazards. Navigation, bombing, missile shooting, firing the gun, being on the lookout for problems. The tandem team of the Phantom was busy every second they were up in the air. Pilots had to spend a lot of their time with their heads buried down, analyzing and interpreting the instrument's data. This isn't common practice with today's modern aircraft, since their display screens are now overhead of the instrument panel. The Deadliest Fighter in Vietnam The Phantom made its first flight on May 27, 1958, with test pilot Robert C. Little at the controls. After its maiden flight, the jet was used extensively during the late stages of the Vietnam War. The F-4 soon became the principal air superiority fighter for the Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps. It was a staple in ground attack and aerial recon roles. One Air Force pilot, Two weapon systems officers, one Navy pilot, and one radar intercept officer became aces by achieving five aerial kills aboard their Phantoms. When the Phantom was adopted by the USAF in 1963, their variant was dubbed the F-4C. The Navy's Phantoms flew their first combat sortie on August 5, 1964, as part of Operation Pierce Arrow. The Phantom's first great air-to-air -air victory happened in April 1965 when Lieutenant Terence Murphy, 
and his radar officer, Ensign Ronald Fagan, shot down a Chinese MiG-17. As fighter interceptors, the Navy's Phantoms downed 40 enemy aircraft. In comparison, they only suffered five losses. The Marine Corps' F-4 serviced from both carriers and land bases during the war. Flying ground support missions, their F-4s claimed three kills but lost 75 of their aircraft, most of them to ground fire. And even though the Air Force was the last branch to adopt the Phantom, they eventually became its largest user. In Vietnam, the Air Force's Phantoms flew air superiority and ground support roles. As F-105 Thunder Chief's losses grew, the F-4 began to carry more ground support. By the end of the war, the Phantom was the USAF's primary all-around aircraft. Combat Tree The Phantom was the first aircraft fitted with the APX-80, a top-secret and supposedly game-changing technology. Better known by its codename, Combat Tree, this feature was installed on a select number of Phantoms, which would fly in hunter-killer teams with other Phantoms equipped with internal rotary cannons. The device's exact details of operations are still classified as of 2020. However, there is some knowledge available on how Phantom Air crews used it. Instead of using a radar scanner on the jet's nose, the weapon system officers behind the pilot would use combat tree to spot specialized transponders built into Vietnam's aircrafts. These transponders would relay a code to the scanners built into their surface-to-air missiles and ground control interception computers. They allowed Vietnam to distinguish between their own fighters and the marauding American aircraft. Combat Tree determined the allegiance of other aircraft by receiving an automatic response from their transponder, which revealed whether the plane was allied or not. The device would accurately plot the quarry's location on display located in the Phantom's rear cockpit. Then, the hunt for the enemy pilot would begin. Meanwhile, the Vietnamese pilot would have no idea all this had happened. This method allowed Phantom pilots to engage Vietnamese MiG-21s at greater distances, even beyond their visual range. Before Combat Tree, all U.S. fighter pilots flying in Vietnamese skies had to get physically close to enemy MiGs to obtain a positive identification on enemy aircraft before attacking them. Since standard radars of the time only determined if aircraft were around, a visual identification was required to establish whether they were allies. Thus, Combat Tree improved the margin of safety for American pilots by allowing them to identify enemy aircraft before they unknowingly engaged the deadly MiG fighters. When the North Vietnamese Air Force found out about the existence of this revolutionary technology, they were puzzled. They didn't quite know what it was or how it functioned. Their highest-ranking North Vietnamese officials noticed a devastating increase of attrition rates with their fighters, especially those who ran into U.S. Air Force fighter jets. Dozens of MiG-21s were reportedly being engaged at distances never seen before and with deadly accuracy. Eventually, radio transmissions between pilots, intercepted by picket stations, were able to pinpoint the reason behind the suddenly high MiG loss rate North Vietnamese aircraft were sustaining. Unbeknownst to them, their own transponders were giving away their locations. By the end of the Vietnam War in 1975, Combat Tree was responsible for attributing the U.S. Air Force with several crucial wins against North Vietnamese aircraft. A Beloved Jet After Vietnam, the Phantom continued to be the Navy and Air Force's aircraft of choice. Throughout the 1970s, the U.S. Navy began replacing the F-4 with the newer F-14 Tomcat. By 1986, all Phantoms had been removed from frontline units. However, the aircraft continued to service the Marine Corps until 1992, until it was substituted by the F-A-18 Hornet. Through the 1970s and 1980s, the Air Force transitioned from the F-4 to the F-15 Eagle and F-16 Fighting Falcon. During this time, the Air Force used the F-4 Phantom II in both reconnaissance and wild weasel roles in the Gulf War. Finally, the jet was retired from service in 1996. Eventually, the Phantom became the only aircraft used by the Air Force's Thunderbirds and the Navy's Blue Angels, America's two flight demonstration teams. Overall, 5,195 Phantoms were built, and it became one of the most successful fighter aircraft since World War II. The United States wasn't the only country to benefit from the F-4's incredible speed. A total of 1,200 new and retired Phantoms were bought by other nations. 
The Israeli Phantoms participated in several Arab-Israeli conflicts, and Iran used their extensive fleet of F-4s in the Iran-Iraq War. About 800 F-4s still fly today in Germany, Greece, Spain, Turkey, Israel, Japan, South Korea, and Egypt. When a fighter jet is sold to all three of the U.S.'s air arms, the large amount of produced aircraft usually reduces the cost per unit. But the Phantom, its vast overseas sales lowered the price even more. As of 2020, 62 years after its maiden flight, the Phantom is still going strong. Despite its shaky start at the McDonnell headquarters, it eventually became one of the most flexible and prolific fighters of its time. Although not entirely aesthetically pleasant, the Phantom was loved by many. Even if its original purpose was not a fighter interceptor, just like the Ugly Duckling story, the Phantom redeemed itself. The F-4 holds the record for the largest production of a supersonic jet aircraft in the U.S., and the second in the world, behind Russia's MiG-21, with a whopping 10,000 units built for numerous conflicts. If they gave awards to aircraft for enduring service, McDonald's F-4 Phantom would definitely be one of the winners. <laughs>